So that. <laughs> oh, thanks. You're welcome. I believe in transparency. <laughs> I um I did drop my career driven mom link. Um, it'll be it's a it's a working website. So um, oh, but they'll is. just see. So yeah. that it says it's a five five day challenge sign up right now. But yeah. And I'm just using the contact form right now. Um, I have, Julie and I have a, a working page, a working landing page, but we're just making the final edits on that. So uh, cool. I think- I have a Julie be. too. Who's doing mine? <laughs> is your Julie and my Julie the same? Same Julie. <laughs> it is the same Julie. <laughs> we will have to give a shout out to Julie because- <laughs> We will. <laughs> the other thing, um, Daniel Goldschmidt mm -hmm. is writing my theme song. For my cool. podcast and it's Yay. so fun he has the first draft is done i'm just having him adjust the balance at the beginning but it was yeah it was a really fun process because my family and i literally brainstormed all these words that we wanted it to reflect and you can hear them in the music <laughs> that's so awesome that's so you i feel like it's amazing it is we're like we want it to be calm and uplifting we yeah. want it to be grounded and, and supportive <laughs> I saw his Twitter yesterday and I almost reached out to him and was going to be like, Hey, I would love to zoom and just hear all about your thesis. And so I yeah. think I might actually do that because it seemed like that was almost like him asking for this. Yep. Like, and I, I, you know, I've been thinking about it this morning. I was like, if he was my female colleague, I would have already said it. It's like, it's yeah. just because he's a male colleague that I'm not. And it's like, and that shouldn't stop me from connecting with a colleague. Yeah. Um, but I feel like when, you know, I just, yep. it's different. It's it different. Yeah. And um, he's going to actually be on my podcast to talk about being a man in music therapy. Sure. And being aware of that difference. Um, um, and I think we're hoping that Hakeem will do it with him because he and Hakeem have had these conversations too. And we think that would just be phenomenal. Yeah. I feel like there's so, so many differences and stuff in terms of like, yeah, that's awesome. All right, I'm going to get us ready to go live here while we keep chatting, so. Okay, yeah, um, so I, I friend requested him on Facebook. I figured that that oh, would good. be a good start. Yeah. And so I sent him a message because he had commented on my Facebook page and I just sent him a message and it's like, hey, you know, I don't think I've ever actually talked to you in person. And I said, I appreciate the fact that you even accepted my friend request. And it's like, <laughs> I just really have heard so much about him from, from you. And then GLR has been talking about him, about whiteness and things like that. Yep. And so I felt like he was somebody that like I really wanted to learn and grow from. And so I just reached out and told him that. And so his comment to me was that anybody who's a friend of yours, so you, Aww. he mentioned you, is a friend of his. <laughs> and so he was like, if you're, he's like, if Jen likes you, I'll like you. <laughs> I was just like, oh. And so you got, you got talked him. about. Aww, <laughs> so, so sweet. Yeah. So I, um, I figured that like he would just be a good person for me to, to get yeah. to know and that I could learn from him. And I feel, I felt like, you know, we would, I don't know. I mean, you've already coined uh, Jennergy, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. He could apply it to you as well. I oh, know. We and there's... add a title. Where's our, oh, there's our title. Um, what did we put it? No, you know, grow. then grow. Or, no, right? then grow. Yep. No, then grow. Yep. Gems. No, then grow. I think we're going live. <laughs> All right. I need to head over to your Facebook page and do a, a Nope, we are live. So are I we should, live? We are. So it is on your page as live. Excellent. Uh, I'm waiting I'm, for it to pop up for me. Cool. Oh, so I have, are. yep. So oh. <laughs> I need to head over to your Facebook page and do a let me get us muted. All right. I think we are live and ready to go. Welcome you all. Thanks for joining us. Jen and I are excited to take this lifelong journey, so it's nowhere nearly done, um, of self-awareness to the next level today by focusing on and sharing with you some of the ways that we try to practice 
know then grow. So as we get to know ourselves, our personalities, our patterns and relationships, our areas of privilege and bias, as we get to know ourselves better, how are we actually living this out? And what does that look like in our lives? Um, by the way, a, a quick um, announcement too. At the end, Jen and I are going to have two exciting announcements. So make sure to stay tuned for those. And we will look forward to sharing those with you. Welcome, Jen. Yeah, thanks for having me or thanks for doing this together. I mean, uh, Jen and I are loving our adventures of Jen and Jen. And so it kind of came about a few months ago. And this is our third time together um, talking about these things. And so every single time I get to talk to this amazing lady, I just get so excited and I'm continuing to learn and grow even with her. So I'm uh, super excited about the fact that um, we brought um, all kinds of resources today of things that we have been learning. And Ava, before we dove on, I feel like we have just even just got excited about each other's resources <laughs> um, that I think um, by the end of this call, Jen and I are going to have at least three or four books that we're going to go out and purchase or, or share. Maybe we should swap. <laughs> we should start swapping books. <laughs> yes. I do actually have what we call in my family, Auntie Jenny's Library. Nice. And so when my family is up and visiting, it's one of their favorite things to do is to explore my library of books. And there's a bunch in there that I still have yet to read. Um, and I just love, love, love books. And I'm always glad to share those and pass those along. And so I'm seeing some amazing people join our conversation today, colleagues and friends. And I would invite you as we share today to share some of your favorite resources in the comments too. What are those must have books, not only for self-awareness, but also for how to um, take that self-awareness to the next level and actually live it out. And one of the pieces of that, if I, if I may start, start, Jen, as you're getting organized yes. there. Yeah. One of the pieces that's been important for me um, is not only having self-awareness here, but really starting to feel it here, to feel it um, at a much deeper level and also to feel it within my body. And one of the um, writers that I just really appreciate is Resma Manikin. And he's had a five day free online course on his website. Um, if you wanna check that out, I highly recommend it. I'm talking about racialized trauma in our bodies. And I think it's just so powerful. Um, and I'm really, really appreciating his book, My Grandmother's Hands as well. It actually has throughout it, um, exercises and body practices to integrate the knowledge as we learn it. And so that's really what Jen and I want to talk about with y'all today and share with y'all and, and hope you'll join us in that conversation of, of not just learning here, but of putting what we learn into practice in our lives um, and in our own self-talk, in our relationships and what that looks like for you. Yeah. Jen, what has been one of your favorite books or takeaways that you'd like to share as we get started? Yeah. So even based on kind of what you said, just like tying into my own life, um, you know, I've had a lot of people just tell me that I look a lot lighter and that like, I just like the way that I, I carry myself. And even then, like, I feel like I move my body more freely. Um, and the other thing, like in my journey of growth that like I've really noticed about myself is that I love much deeper now. Um, mm -hmm. So even like my love for my friends and even like the love that I have for like other people and like my passions kind of come back, you know, when I was like in the weeds of my life, um, I would make comments all the time about wanting to close my business. And if you know me, like I love my business. I love music therapy and I love being a business owner. I love being an entrepreneur and stuff. And I used to like really struggle with that. And I was actually having this conversation with my accountant the other day um, to where, you know, he's like, yeah, I heard you say that all the time, but I knew it wasn't going to happen. And it's like, but I felt it so hard. Um, and he's like, but you're just so passionate about what you do. But I lost so much of that passion and I lost so much of those things that I feel like the more self-aware I become, the more what you were talking about, about the more that I focus on it here and that I rewrite my narratives and I rewrite the, you know, those things that the more of my whole body, like what you're talking about has changed. And so, and you know, it's like, even just in terms of like, even when I feel myself having those negative thoughts, I can feel some of the tension inside my body. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's like, even just being aware of when you start having those negative thoughts and how your body is carrying those negative thoughts, I think is, is such a big piece of that. Um, and I, and I know that's, that's kind of what you're, what you're talking about with that. And the book that really helped me with that, we just talked about a little bit was the happiness trap trap where we talk, or where it talks about diffusing your negative thoughts and using, and then rewriting that script for connection. So, you know, uh, in this book, it, uh, they talk about that 
in a, on a day-to-day -day basis, we have more negative thoughts than we do positive thoughts. So it's that, you know, oh, I'm late to picking up my kids. I'm such a horrible parent. No, like you got stuck in traffic and life happens and there's things out of your control. But it's, so it's, you know, acknowledging the fact that I'm thinking this and this is just the thought. This isn't, doesn't define who I am. It doesn't define, you know, this stuff. And, you know, and we, we're constantly our own worst critics, or at least that's what they say, um, <laughs> whoever they is. Um, and, but it's, but it's so true. And we are, um, and we, and we do, we do have negative thoughts throughout the day. And so this book really changed me in terms of being able to diffuse those negative thoughts and then turn them into ways of connecting. Um, you know, and so like now I acknowledge other parents that are having those thoughts that are beating themselves up for, you know, those very same things that, you know, it, instead of joining the judgment train or, you know, judging others, that it's, it's coming from a place of understanding and respect that, you know, like we all, we've all been there and we've all done that and, you know, and, and trying to kind of create this. Yeah, absolutely. The, the language that I like with that and that I've used over the last several years is being aware of the stories that we tell ourselves. Sure. Yeah. Um, and I think that may have come from crucial conversations. That's sure. one of the pieces that this has as a tool when we're having those challenging conversations with others is being aware as we're listening, being aware of what are those stories that we're telling ourselves? What are those thoughts that we're having? Um, and then being aware that we can choose how to respond from there rather mm -hmm. than reacting and assuming, um, but instead choosing how to respond. Um, and for me, you know, being aware of where that lives in our bodies because it will, you know, and, and Jen mentioned the tension that we hold in our body. And if you know me um, <laughs> pretty well, you know that I've had some pretty severe mm -hmm. physiological illnesses as a result of chronic stress in my life, um, connected with my past brain injury and, and some of that. And so it's taken me a long time to as Jen talked about, really understand how living out our core values, living mm -hmm. out who we are authentically, um, really does help to resolve a lot of that and, and help us to live more lightly um, yeah. and, and more true with who we are. And also, when I have those negative thoughts or when my body is responding to stress or when I'm feeling anxiety of being able to look on that as my friends, to be able to look on those old patterns, to be able to look on those as messages to me and to thank my body, to thank my thoughts for mm -hmm. letting me know. Um, this morning, my brain was really scattered when I was doing my meditation practice. And so I was really working through that of instead of going, oh, I'm so scattered, I'm just gonna forget this. I'm going, oh, thank you for this moment for me to realize how scattered my brain is today. Sure. To realize that I might need to be able to do some things to take care of myself a little differently because you let me know that. So thank you thoughts, thank you body. Um, coming from this place of gratitude has really been helpful for me. Do you ever find yourself when you're in a place that your mind is like so scattered that even focusing on like one thing like can help you? So, you know, something like for instance and stuff, um, I used to, when I would try to meditate, I always had that really busy brain and meditation is just not for me. Um, maybe I should try it again. Um, but I would have to like almost like count numbers or sing songs or something in my mind to try to do something like is that something that in terms of meditation like for when your mind is busy do you have a, like a go-to that you kind of do to maybe pull yourself back into that or do you just <sighs> that might be a really hard question <laughs> well sorry <laughs> There's lots of answers to it, at least for me. And so I'll just say again, this sure. is just for me and my practices. Um, and then I'll talk about what we talked about before we went live, <laughs> since this is a great lead way into that. Um, one of the biggest pieces for me is being able to come to a place of acceptance and sitting in it. Mm, and I think yeah. that's a really important piece um, in a lot of areas of our lives of building stamina with discomfort. Sure. Um, Resmo Menikin talks about this, um, and a lot of authors have, have talked about this idea um, because it's very much related to white fragility, too, in that it's hard for us to sit with discomfort. We don't like that. And so we want a quick response. We want a fast answer. We want an easy answer when actually what the answer is, is can we sit in this a little bit more? Mm, um, I like I that. Was, yeah. I was doing some training um, for somatic um, therapy and, and, and work that I'm hoping to incorporate a little bit more. And it was so fascinating because in the training, the phenomenal therapist who was leading the training had some technological difficulties and their partner or their wife was on the call. And, um, and they had this amazing dialogue about 
how she sat in the discomfort of wanting to help, but didn't rush to fix it. Mm. And I tend to be a fawner. Um, if you aren't aware of the fourth F, right? Fight, flight, fawn, and freeze. Ooh, I t- ooh, yep. yeah. Isn't that great? Fight, I, fawn. Yeah. <laughs> I, like I, am a, I am a fighter and a fawner. Um, <laughs> so when I'm not fighting, I'm fawning. I'm trying to help. I'm trying to do something. I'm trying to fix it. Um, rather than letting myself sit in discomfort. I know that it's not always my job to fix it. And I think that that applies too in my meditation practice of part of what I practice is being able to sit in that discomfort of being able to sit in that scattered mindset to be able to notice it and not try to push it away or do things to make it go away. um, But to really fully embrace that practice. And, and for me, that's, (laughs) it's been helpful. (laughs) And now I've been using every like technical difficulty and every Zoom call I'm in as an opportunity to practice to build that stamina. Just like with anything else where we need to build stamina, I'm a cyclist for those of you who know me and I love riding. Um, We rode, I'm in Eden Prairie, Minnesota and we we rode down to Chaska and back um, and did a bunch of hills last weekend. So about two and a half hours of riding. Um, Yeah. two and a half hours on the bike and then some extra time um, for parks and stuff in the middle of it. Um, It takes stamina for me to build up to that. I can't just hop on my bike and do that. And so the same is true when we talk about being able to sit in discomfort, whether that's related to the conversations we're having on race, to whether that's related to the parts of our personalities that we're getting to know, um, whether that's related to relationship of not running away from that discomfort, but being able to sit within it. Um, And, and, and then um, to find some commonalities too, to be able to connect within that. I could tell you had a thought. What was your thought? I have so many thoughts. As you're talking, I'm like grabbing books. I'm like, oh, this relates to that. And by the way, for all y'all joining us, please feel free to add in the comments some of your favorite resources too. We would love to hear from you, your yeah. thoughts, your resources as you're listening to us. Um, Jen and I have shared that when we get together, we just, our, our ideas just start to grow and grow and grow and our bookshelves start to grow and grow and grow. So please so add true. your ideas too. <laughs> Yeah. So one of my friends, Rachel, just says, hi, ladies, and I'm loving this. And so thank you, Rachel, for joining us. And so I hope you're still with us um, and still loving this. So um, so in discomfort, I, I feel like I've kind of tried to lean into discomfort, even though like I find myself right now, um, you know, trying to go down um, another business idea. Um, and I find myself, you know, being in discomfort from that and like allowing some of my thoughts to kind of get jumbled in terms of, you know, leading into this. And you know, when I sit and talk about it with you or, you know, other individuals that I'm comfortable with, I can, I can talk and talk and talk and talk about it. And my passion like really flows with it. But when it comes down to actually doing it, I feel like I'm putting so much of, this is a me business. This is, it's a lot about me and it's not necessarily about music therapy. It's totally different business structure. And so I find myself like really in the discomfort of that. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, and I know that's, you know, I feel like that, you know, can be so relatable to other people when we talk about bringing on new things, bringing on, you know, new learning opportunities. And so one of the books that I just thought like I need to go back and kind of reread that you and I talked about is the five second rule. And Mm -hmm. so she like in the five second rule, rule, and this is something I said to you in the beginning, it sounds so silly because it's like, you know, you're counting down from five and then taking that leap into whatever it is that's making you feel uncomfortable. But she, you know, talks about like, there's people in here that are talking about that, you know, they were afraid to start college or they were afraid to take this next leap into their life. And the whole idea of it is not letting yourself, like not talking yourself out of it, but counting down from five and doing it. And so even like, um, one of the things that I've tried to incorporate is getting out of bed immediately because there's research that shows hitting snooze. Um, it, it actually like restarts your sleep cycle. And so it actually makes it harder for you to get out of bed when you're hitting snooze. And it makes it harder for you to be more productive in the morning than if you just get out of bed. So it's the whole concept if when I don't want to get out of bed that I count down from five and I get my butt out of bed and I get on with my day. And so even that's something that she talks about in this book, but I think it's so big in that discomfort. And so it's not necessarily getting yourself out of that discomfort. It's getting yourself to take the action inside the discomfort. Mm -hmm. Um, And I feel like this book, it's such an easy, it's such a small, easy principle, but there's so much to learn 
to master that principle and to really apply it into your life. And I'm still learning. I'm still like, you know, thinking of all the ways that I've not used this after learning it. I did it all the time. And now, you know, it's been a long time since I've read this book. Maybe I need a refresher so that way I can, you know, do my five seconds and, you know, do whatever it is that I'm scared to do, you know, or what I'm shying away from because of discomfort. Oh, and, and I need to go back to that statement you made, Jen, because it's so powerful that it's not yeah. about getting out of the discomfort. Yeah. Right? Right. It's about learning to sit within it. And yeah. that is so huge. That's where we build the stamina. Sure. Um, I'm in a um, book study right now um, with Daniel Goldschmidt. Shout out to Daniel. Um, and we've been reading Me and White Supremacy by Layla, mm-hmm. Layla Saeed. Um, highly recommend that book. And it comes with um, journal prompts throughout. And as she writes, she really talks about, you know, getting out of the head, going here and sitting in the discomfort and journaling in the discomfort and not, not trying to escape it right away, but building that stamina to actually look within and dig deeper and continue to learn. And now I'm trying to remember what was Brene Brown's acronym for dig. Oh, I just actually read her. I Did you just, just read, read that? About dig. Yes, it just came it to is. mind. Uh, it is, oh my gosh, I just literally read it. It's get deliberate, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, get inspired and get going. And so mm-hmm. she talks about that in her chapter of authenticity in this. And so where she's talking about, you know, really truly being who you are and being that authentic self and how we have to make the conscious decision every day to be our authentic selves. And so that it's, it's something we have to work towards because we all know the people that are sometimes authentic, sometimes not. And when you're around them, you can feel that. And then there's individuals that don't try to be authentic, that that they try to blend in. And so she talks a lot about trying to be that, you know, really truly to yourself, because then you don't have to change that. It's, it's, it's learning to allow people to accept you for who you are. And it's learning to, you know, really understand that, you know, just because, you know, you are who you are, it doesn't mean that every single person is going to be attracted to that and to let those relationships go that, you know, don't accept you for who you authentically are. Um, and I, I love that. And I love her, her dig, like literally I just read that. <laughs> so, like, I'm so glad you have that so, easily findable. I, I have that on Nook. And so it's a little trickier to find things when I'm like, where was that highlighting? Um, and I love that because it also goes back to your five second book and what we've been talking about today of sure. that get moving piece of let's put this in action. So yes, it's about learning and reflecting and sitting within the discomfort and it's about living in a more authentic way. And the difference yeah. that that makes in our personal lives, that difference that it makes in our business practices, the difference that it makes in just how we live out every aspect in our lives and how important mm-hmm. that is. Yeah. And her, some of her stuff goes into that five seconds, her three, she talks about in this book, the three C's, courage, compassion, Mm -hmm. and connection. Connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I mean, those three things are just so powerful when we start having those, those courage, the courage to sit in discomfort, the courage to take action in discomfort, the courage to do, to overcome all of the things that we've overcome compassion. Like, I mean, how many times have we had to be compassionate to ourselves, to other people and practicing compassion on a regular basis? is, I mean, it's beneficial for everyone. And then I love where she's talking about connection and how we have this like false sense of connection through like social media. And I am so guilty of that, that false like connection. And I have to have like really meaningful connection in my life. And she talks about how we all do, like how, Mm -hmm. like that's like the normal parts is that, that connection and that, you know, every single person in the, in the world needs connection, you know, whether that be, you know, with a spouse, a friend, whomever, like our families or, you know, whatever, um, you know, we're not meant to go through this world alone. We're not meant to do these things by ourselves. You know, we've all heard the, the, um, the quote, um, you know, it takes a village. Um, and, and we've all heard that. And that's, you know, one of the things that, um, that I've talked about before too, is that finding your harmony versus finding balance is that, you know, as musicians, we know we can't create harmony alone, that we have to have other people to create harmony in our lives. And so like, for me, you know, being like going through a divorce and going through all the things that I went through, it became important, so important to me to find harmony. So finding the people that were on my side, finding the, not on my side, that sounds really bad, but finding the people <laughs> that supported me. Um, I don't want people to choose sides, but finding the people that supported me and supported me in this journey and this growth. 
Um, but then also finding that that those meaningful connections that I could keep as I, I moved into, a, you know, in, in a way, a less connected sort of, you know, because you think about like, you know, for most people, when you think about that connection, most people think of their spouse. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, and I didn't have really meaningful connection in my marriage, which is part of why it's no longer exists. Um, and so now it's finding that meaningful connection in the relationships that I have. And, you know, going back to earlier in the conversation, I've learned to love my friends deeper than I've ever loved my friends. So ultimately I feel more connected to my friends and I feel more connected to the people that, you know, that are, you know, important parts of my life that I've never felt before because I did the work, because I've done these things and it's become so important to me. And I've also like found loving myself and all of those things. And, you know, so many of the other big pieces that we just cannot talk about today. So. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's really important to honor the importance of connection and community. Yeah. Um, I, I shared about this actually really recently on my Joyful Noises page. If you didn't have a chance to see it there, y'all can check it out. Um, I had created a graphic about community um, from, oh, who's the, who's the leadership writer, Seth? Uh, my, mine went oh, to Seth Rogen. It's on my but... Joyful Noises page. <laughs> mine is there. Um, yeah. And um, I created this graphic literally the morning before I found out about the murder of George Floyd. Mm. And I'd had this graphic sitting just in my pile of ideas. Um, and so that idea, though, of community has been sure. really resonating for me a lot lately. And what does that mean? And mm -hmm. what does that mean on what does that mean in the time of COVID? Right. As we talk about being, you know, this is the extroverted gens, um, <laughs> your guide to COVID. And and what does that mean for us? What does that mean as we seek to create a more just country and world? What, what, yeah. who is our community? What is that? Um, and how are we actively creating that community? And, and who are we creating space for in that community? And um, Natasha Thomas gave me permission to share a little bit of her reflections on that as well. So if you want to check out that post in Joyful no Noises, she's been reflecting a lot on community lately too. And I just think it's so important. Um, if you're someone who likes videos, um, Vivek Murthy, uh, who is the former Surgeon General of the United States, has written a book called Together, The Healing Power of Human Connection in a Sometimes Lonely World. And Ooh, he did, yeah, it is, it is so great. He did a video um, with Renee Fleming in part of her new webinar series that she's been doing. Um, and so you could go back and find that. And I just remember him talking so much about how we can make the ways that we can connect now. Right? Mm -hmm. When we can't connect as much in person, how we can make these ways of connection more authentic and more real and more meaningful. And um, it was actually him who inspired me. I, we have these daily fam jams. If you're not familiar with the grand family fam jam, it's a thing. Um, and since March 26, we went back and looked at the date not long ago. My um, family, my parents, my sisters, um, at least one of our nieces, three generations of us have been meeting on Zoom for an hour every day. And I love that. <laughs> it, is, it is so important for me. Um, those of you who know me, family is really, really important to me. It's why I moved from Arizona up here um, and not being able to be with them during this time is challenging. And it was listening to Vivek Murthy and Renee Fleming talk that really inspired me when I'm on those daily fam jams to be fully present. Mm. I love that. And not be doing a bunch of other things, <laughs> right? And kind of half listening as much as possible to really be fully present and yeah. with people. Um, and it makes a difference, that sense of connection, that sense of community that we can build. So I'd invite you, if you're joining us in the chat, um, to feel free to add some of your ideas for ways to create connection and community, especially during this time of COVID-19. It yeah. is so important. Um, Vivek Murthy in his book talks about the medical reasons why, <laughs> the, the literal physiological reasons why loneliness is important to acknowledge, right? It's actually one of those survival um, indicators for us that that we we survive better in community and so it's an important indicator when we're unhealthy and there's also really important ways that we can increase our health by establishing those meaningful connections um, so if yeah. you have ideas please feel free to add those in the comments 
So Morgan and I, um, Morgan Sparks, she's a music therapist as well that you know, um, when we, we did a, a CMTE together about, um, it's called Find Your Harmony and Parenting, Career and Parenting, and one of the things we talk about is community, and, you know, Morgan and I are polar opposites, like, so when you hear, like, opposites attract, like, she, I guess I shouldn't say we're polar opposites, but we're pretty opposite, um, and so she's very introverted, very quiet, very reserved, and then there's me, um, who is not <laughs> that at all. Um, and so like we, we balance each other so well and we, we create some really great content and create stuff together because we're so different. And when we talk about community, we talk so differently about her. Like she lives in a small town, um, that her community is like really her small town. And she's got this, this, this community that she really nurtures and stuff of like wanting to build this town and stuff. And then you talk about community in my sense, which is much mm -hmm bigger um, because of the fact that I'm so I'm very much a type A extrovert and I connect I, I connect with people very easily and you know and I just have a kind of a dominant personality so again it's really knowing ourselves and knowing kind of what what our needs are in terms of that community too so like the thing I love about the word community is just how broad it is, you know, like your community can be an online group mm -hmm. like because even though we talk about that connection online you can take you can have connections online in deeper ways, you know? And so like, even if it's like a support group that's online or, you know, connecting in, t in, in our community inside of our small town, music therapy community, Jen is part of my music therapy community. And this has been a relationship that I've really enjoyed nurturing and a relationship I've really have enjoyed expanding in the last few months through COVID. Um, and Jen and I have, have known each other for a long time, but our relationship has completely changed in COVID and I feel a greater connection with her. So, you know, thinking about the ways that we can we have those communities and what they look like they can be professional communities they can be your small town they can be your family community like we can have multiple communities but also it's okay if you only have one or two communities because maybe having too many communities feels overwhelming um and knowing you know it comes back to knowing and growing um inside those communities and those growing those connections and whatever those are and what is you know right for one person doesn't necessarily have to so if a community like a, a thing isn't working, you know, try something different, you know, look for the ways of, of having that connection in those communities, um, I think is really, is really important. And, and just kind of knowing yourself in terms of what your needs are. Absolutely. I also think one of the pieces I reflected on with community is not only creating and building and listening and being a part of the communities that connect with my core values, but also reaching out and listening and learning from the wider community yes. that might be out of that comfort zone. So talking about getting back out of that comfort again, right? Um, mm -hmm. And one of my very wise sisters, I have two incredibly wise sisters, and one of them was talking during our fam jam about a growing awareness of not just who we include in our communities, but who we might be excluding. Sure. And unintentionally, right? We, we've talked, I think, in the past about how just because we have good intentions does not mean it does not have a harmful impact. And so being aware of how we can create communities that are more inclusive, that are listening, that are learning, and that are continuing to know then grow as we're talking about today. Um, and both Jen and I are, are um, really believe strongly in the value of community, if you can't tell. And since we're nearing that half hour mark, Jen, this is a great tie in to talk about the communities that we're working to build and some of the new places yes. we're going with our businesses. Do you want to talk about yours first? Either way is fine. So, um, <laughs> so my community is called Career Driven Mom. So Career Driven Mom has come from um, a place of really what I identify. Um, in the last few years, I've really struggled um, with kind of juggling my career and juggling being a mom. Um, there are two things that are extremely important to me. Um, my career is what kind of defines me as a person. Um, and I shouldn't even say it like that because there, you know, in a lot of my favorite business books, it talks about your business being separate from you and things like that. But also at the same time, like I get a lot of passion out of the work I do and I love the work I do. And it does really define who I am. Um, and it makes me happy and it makes me a, uh, it makes me a better me. Um, I wouldn't say that my work is self-care um, by any means um, because I do need to have my time and space away from work. But at the same time, like it, it does fill my cup in a lot of aspects um, and it does make me a better me. And so that's really hard when, um, when society and, and sometimes um, norms kind of make 
can make women feel guilty for admitting that or even saying that out loud. Um, and so, you know, struggling, balancing between this, this passion career that I love and nurture and have, and that, you know, really makes me a better me. Um, and then also having these two wonderful, beautiful children that I adore and love and fill my cup every day as well. Um, and also are really challenging and my career can be really challenging. Um, so juggling these, these two worlds has been really a blessing and, um, and, and also very hard. And so um, it's kind of wanting to bring down some of those conversations. Like for instance, when I used to try to work from home, um, I started having conversations about quality versus quantity. Like, should I spend more time with my children um, if it impacts the quality of time that they get, or should I be focusing on the quality versus the quantity? And so it started really challenging me to have these types of conversations about how to be a career-driven mom and how to love my career and love this and if fill my cup, but also have this other part of my world that sometimes don't always feel like they, they blend in harmony. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it's really forced me to grow and to learn and to, um, to really have that. And so, um, I'm starting, I want to start a podcast. I'm going to start a podcast. My goal is by August <laughs> 1st it, yes. to start a podcast. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I'm owning this, uh, and to feature other career driven moms and to start having these conversations to help other women who are juggling a passion filled career or juggling a career that they love. And that, you know, takes up so much of their time. And how do we parent at the same time? Mm -hmm. Um, and how do we, how do these two worlds um, live in harmony together where everybody's cup is full um, or mostly full? I mean, we're all going to have our days um, and, 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 you know, how we get through those days and how we kind of come together. So, um, so I have a website now and I uh, have a Facebook group called Career Driven Mom. So come and join me. Um, I'm beginning to start creating some content to really show some nuggets and stuff and hoping to, to get some things going here soon. That is so awesome. Um, yeah. And Lindsay actually just commented, another amazing career-driven mom, Lindsay commented, Yay. hi, Jens, thanks for sharing your experiences and wisdom. Um, and Lindsay is someone who I'm always learning from too, um, as is Jen. And um, when we were talking both about this extroverted Jens Facebook Live that we've been doing on the first Thursday of the month with y'all, uh, when we started about expanding into the world of podcasts, it was really mm -hmm. exciting and interesting and I think validating to be able to have conversations between us and discover that the communities we wanted to create in that podcast world were different. Mm -hmm. And I love learning from Jen and from Lindsay about those ex experiences of career-driven moms. Um, I'm a career-driven dog mom, <laughs> but <laughs> slightly different um, and, and have a huge respect um, to the mothers and fathers and parents in, um, in my communities who continue to teach me so much about what it means to care for our next generation and what it means to do that in the midst of having passion for who you are and what you do outside of that role too. So um, I'm super excited about that. And for those career driven moms who are listening today, I hope you'll check out um, Jen's podcast and website. Thank we you. do need to give a shout out to Julie Palmieri because she is working on Ooh. both of our <laughs> websites for our new adventures right now. So the we Jens are keeping Julie. Julie busy. Um, so the community that I am creating is called Empty Mentor. And it is an intentional play on MT being music therapy and also empty as your cup is empty. Um, and so the tagline mm. is fill your cup and share your wisdom. And I'm super it. excited about it. I'm going to drop in my comments here the contact page on my website, it has a spot for you to mark if you want to learn more about the podcast, if you want to learn more about the membership group that, I, group that I'm creating. Um, and those announcements are going to be coming out in these next couple of weeks here. The podcast, I'm super excited to get to feature other mentors in our music therapy world in a variety of areas um, and have those conversations with the people who have both been mentors for me and also the people who have been mentors for others um, and the people who continue to guide our thoughts to help to guide our profession as we seek to move our profession forward. And so I'm super excited about that podcast. Shout out to Daniel Goldschmidt, who is working on the music for the podcast. So all of Yay. that is coming together. We gave him a, a huge task of creating music that was both calm 
calm and uplifting and supportive and grounding and <laughs> all of warm and welcoming. We had all these great words and he's been doing a fabulous job of, of putting that into music for us. Um, and then I'm also creating a membership group and there is a private Facebook group that is available um, that you can indicate your interest in and I'll add you to the list for when it goes live and opens up um, at MT Mentor. And um, the membership group is going to include not only that private Facebook group, but also um, peer supervision with me and the other members of the membership group weekly, as well as weekly office hours privately with me. And so there'll be the opportunities for some direct mentorship. There will also be content and the content of course will feature things on self-care and self-awareness and mindfulness and these areas about which I'm passionate. Um, each of the content units will have a graphic, an infographic, a reflection sheet for your own personal reflection and then some detailed information on how to take it to that next step that this no then grow part, as well as resources to use too. Um, I am super excited about how this is coming together and um, really look forward to sharing that with you over these next couple of weeks here. Oh, it has been such a journey, Yay. Jen, and it's continuing. And I, th I think that's really I the know. important piece when we were talking about um, self-awareness for us is not something that's done. Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah, I still have, I still have a stack of books over here that I haven't shared about and I'm still reading. So, so we've got, yeah, I think the know then grow will probably continue next month too. So I think so. Well, even we talked about things before we got on the call that we didn't cover today. And so, but it's always, it is always truly a pleasure talking to you, Jen. I just, I love it. I value this time and I just yeah. really appreciate your time today. So I appreciate yours as well, Jen. And I appreciate the time that all y'all who joined us were willing to share with us today. We do hope yeah. that in the comments, you'll share some of your wisdom, um, that you will share maybe some of the books or the resources or the people who have been helpful in guiding you in your own self-awareness journeys, um, the ways that you have found community and connection, especially during this time of COVID-19. We know that this is a marathon, not a sprint, y'all. So we mm -hmm. need to continue to cultivate those connections and make sure that we are caring caring for ourselves and caring for each other um, within those communities as we move forward. Um, and so we will look forward to seeing you back here. The Extroverted Gens will be back again on the first Thursday of the month at this time here on Facebook Live. In the meantime, we hope that you will check out Career Driven Mom, that you'll check out MT Mentor and see if one of those communities might also be a good fit or maybe both of those communities might be a good fit um, to help support you as we continue to move forward together. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jen. Thank you, Jen. Thank you all. Take care. Bye.